I mean, can we just thank God that Beyonce was not in this? Can we just thank the Jesus? Hey guys, it's Wahima, and I'm here to do a review for The Wiz live on NBC, in case you've been under a rock or you don't live in the States. There was the live TV musical version of The Wiz. You guys, I really loved it. I'm really excited that it happened. I'm so excited that they put the ensemble that they put together. I'm glad that it was a newcomer. I'm, I'm just glad about a lot of things. So I'm gonna go into some detail about some stuff. I'm gonna do some technical side. I'm gonna do stuff I liked, stuff I didn't like, okay? So the first thing, the cast of The Wiz was starring David Allen Greer as the Cowardly Lion. Shanice Williams, a newcomer, 19 years old, and she played Dorothy. Elijah Kelly as the Scarecrow, and Neo as the Tin Man. I mean, if you saw this you already know that it was fantastic I mean there might be some people who um, want to compare it to the movie musical from the 70s starring Diana Ross and Michael Jackson Nipsey Russell and the cowardly lion whose name I do not know uh, <laughs> but you can't compare it because that was supposed to be based off of the original Broadway musical. So this production of The Wiz live on NBC was based off of the original Broadway musical. And I mean, just thank God that we got to see the original because honestly, had I not seen this, I wouldn't have known how vocally amazing Dorothy could be and should be. I know back in the day my mom was talking about how there was a little bit of an upset that Diana Ross got to play Dorothy and that many people thought that uh, Stephanie Mills, who originally played Dorothy, who actually played Auntie M in this version, should have been Dorothy and they're absolutely correct. Like the musical, the music for this play, Diana Ross couldn't carry and she didn't carry and they changed the arrangements for her so that she could sing the notes that she needed to sing. Don't get me wrong, Diana Ross is in my heart. Her version is in my heart, but I'm like actually really glad that I got to see this musical um, as it's meant to be and as it's meant to sound with the full voice and the full power that um, a strong, vocally strong Dorothy can bring to it. And let me tell you, Shanice Williams did not disappoint at all. Um, just to start with the technical side of it, I wanna say that I loved the sets. I mean, I loved the costumes, the makeup was dope. I mean, there was just, let me get to my notes. Um, so technically, the music wise, I mean, everything was on point. The only, there was a couple of actors who I was like, oh, your musicality is a little like, ugh. like David Allen Greer, like God bless him, he hit it sometimes and sometimes he didn't hit it. I first learned about David Allen Greer from In Living Color, so to see him go from this comedian who does like sketch comedy to, you know, silly parts in movies to being, you know, on Broadway. I actually saw David Allen Greer on Broadway with Audrey McDonald in Porgy and Bess. And he did a good job. He's not a singer, you know, but he's a gr phenomenal, great actor. So I give him that. And he was in this full, full face costume. I think him and the Scarecrow, as far as just the characters who went all throughout the, um, the play, they were in like full on costume. So he couldn't move around as much. I know he was sweating like crazy, but he was in this huge thing and like, oh, I mean, just bravo for him for being made up top to bottom and then still being able to act through that. He really brought some really funny comedic timing to the show and it was wonderful. I, I honestly have to say that the lighting and the costuming dealing with his character was superb. When we first saw him as the Cowardly Lion, he was kind of cast in this gray shadow and he looked like he was gray. And I was a little bit like, why is the Cowardly Lion gray? But as it progressed, he progressively got more yellow. He still didn't completely turn yellow because that would have been like, they would have had to do uh, a makeup change but with the lighting and with his costume he progressively came became more yellow looking more like a lion and I just loved that effect it was so subtle but it was just so it was such a good job with makeup and lighting working together like that like when you have that kind of bonding with those two elements it I mean it could do such magical things and that's what it did for me for the sets I mean the set design, let's talk about that tornado. That tornado, I mean, I know everyone's like, oh, what? But I mean, Dorothy flying through the air, all the dancers coming out, um, the scene changes, the light changes for that tornado. That was so beautiful. And then when we land in Munchkin Land, how the light slowly pulls back and it turns into this wonderful, rich, yellow, orange, and then Michael Kilgore comes out. I mean, I know nobody knows who he is, um, but 
He actually has done some work with Postmodern Juke Jukebox here on YouTube. And Michael Kilgore, like, I mean, that boy can sing. Like, he came out, I don't know if you, I mean, if you watched it, he was deputy sort of, like the one who was like, who killed the witch? And did you do that? Did you do that? You know, and he, I mean, phenomenal. And he also hit that note at the very end um, with the song with Queen Latifah before she gets into the hot air balloon and goes off. Oh my God. And please, for those of you who are like spoilers, I mean, if you don't know the story of The Wiz already, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's everywhere. It's not like it's like a secret. <laughs> it's the Wizard of Oz, so, but the black version. Um, and also I probably, I haven't read a lot of tweets on it, but I know that there are probably a lot of people out there who were like, oh, you turned the, the Wizard of Oz into this. Like everything in this world is white. And so black people started to take things that were all white people and adding black people in them so that black people could work as actors and black people could see themselves on television. So for those of you who feel like, oh, why does it have to be all black? because everything is all white. And so it's just to counterbalance that and give those of us who are deep, deep melanated folk in this world, something to look at and to look up to and admire and love. And it did the world for me. Okay, so moving on. The direction was, it was directed by Kenny Leon. He also directed Still Magnolias and A Raisin in the Sun. He did a good job. There were some camera angles that I was a little weird about, so I'm not sure who was the director of like photography, but as far as the direction of how how it worked out on the stage. I mean, it was wonderful. I, I loved the choreography. He just not the choreographer, but I love the choreography. I just love the way the actors moved with each other. And I love the background ensemble and how they moved with each other. And I just felt like everyone involved in this production was super excited to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like all of the chorus members gave 100%. When they had their time to shine, they made their time to shine important. They didn't come at it half-assed. They came at it full-blown. I was like, everybody's excited. Everyone's like, yes, we're in the whiz. Like, I don't care if I just stand here. We in the whiz. Um, so that was like really, really great. I mean, I hope that their costumes at least get nominated for an Emmy because they were so good. They were almost like Lion King-esque. I don't know if you guys have seen Lion King on Broadway, but it was it was like colorful and movable. And I mean, just the, the performers from Cirque du Soleil, like um, just fantastic, actually. I loved it. Um, so let's move on to the technical side of the singing. The, for me, the people who killed it singing-wise was Shanice Williams, um, obviously Stephanie Mills, who played Auntie Anne, Auntie M, as I said, um, and Mary J. Blige. I mean, let's talk about Mary J. Blige taking us to church. Like, sh Mary J. Blige put her foot in this role. Like, I could see somebody easily coming onto this and being really lazy about it, but she was not playing. She was like, I'm gonna make my mark. I'm gonna take y'all to church. I'm gonna look so fly doing it. And I'm gonna be poised and I'm gonna be this witch. And it's, it was great. I mean, Mary J. Blythe was, was everything. Elijah Kelly as a scarecrow. I mean, it was hard for me because I'm such a big Michael Jackson fan that my only, the only, you know, I only know is Michael Jackson as a scarecrow. And so to see Elijah Kelly step into that, those shoes for me was really great because he made it his own. Um, they didn't use the original song from the original Broadway musical for him. They gave him the song that they wrote for Michael Jackson for the movie version, You Can't Win, and he made it his own. I didn't hate it, I loved it, and I was just kind of like, bravo, because it's really easy to try to like mimic Michael, you know, but he didn't do that, he did his own thing. Um, and Michael Kilgore, Stephanie, you know, Stephanie Mills, Michael Kilgore, like, Amber Riley surprised me too, and I don't know why. I mean, I thought she was the best thing to happen to Glee. But I was like, yes, Amber, give it to us at a pearl. We loves it. I mean, I loved her. I thought she did a really good job. Uzo Aduba, Glinda the Good Witch. Yes, ma'am, yes. She was so powerful. She was so ethereal. She was so beautiful. Her costume was, was so rich and amazing. I mean, like, if costumes and sets don't get nominated for an Emmy, I don't know, like, what's going on. Okay, and let's talk about dark skin. Let's talk about all the dark skin. Let's talk about how she's supposed to be the most beautiful, the brightest star, and she is a dark skin, full-figured woman. <sighs> It makes me so happy. And her song at the end, when she started singing, I started to cry. It was so sincere. It was so subtle. When she's hit those bigger notes, though, when it was like those bigger, louder, longer notes, I wasn't as like, I felt like it could have been a little bit better. But like those subtle notes when she first started singing that song, which is so, I mean, they were just so like, 
I mean, it was just like, I don't know how to explain it. It makes me feel like, oh, like that. And it's like she was the grand finale and I loved every second of her. I just want her to be beautiful like that and I want her to be celebrated and I want full figured women to be celebrated and I want dark skinned women to be celebrated. And we were celebrated in the Wiz, you guys. <laughs> we were celebrated. Dark skinned men and women. We were celebrated. And that's the one thing that makes me so happy is that we weren't put in the back as chorus. We were in the front. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy. As a dark skinned actress, it just warms my heart to know that there are dark skinned actresses out there that are doing it and they're paving the way. They're paving the way for me to come right in behind them. <laughs> now let's talk about just overall what I really loved. I love the munchkins. I thought that all the ensemble pieces, as I said before, were fantastic. Did you notice that one Asian girl as a munchkin? I was like, go girl, you get in this musical. You do you. Um, I, I mean, Shanice, I can't even like, applaud her even more. Shanice is just amazing. The scarecrows were really good and their one-liners. Those, I mean, those, I told you this ensemble, when they got their one line, they acted the hell out of that one line. They were like, look, we're in the whiz. Everyone just took it up a notch. Scarecrow was great. The Tin Man was good. I liked him when he wasn't singing. Um, I like Neo and I think that he's a good singer, but he brought a pop element to it that I was just kind of like, mm. I'm not here for the pop sound, you know, like he, he brought a little pop to it, but as it progressed, I liked him more and more. I liked his character as the Tin Man, how he like was like a, a Southern or like a Kansas City guy or like whatever, his little accent. I liked that. Um, and Devin, David Allen Greer, like I said, God bless him. <laughs> he didn't hit all the notes all the time, but he hit some of the notes some of the times and the ones that he hit were really powerful and magical. Um, Common, like I just, I don't even know why he was there. They could have gave that to some other actor who's been in the business working hard for 10 years. Like Common did not need that. He was boring. I, he didn't do anything with it. I don't know if he had a coach. I don't know if he didn't get an acting coach, but he had like some like 10 lines and they were all delivered dry as toast. And I like Common. I just don't know what, I mean, I, li I like him in other things that he's in. You know, I like him in Hell on Wheels. I liked him in that one movie with Queen Latifah. But like, this was like, boy, that's all you got? That's how I felt. Um, let's see. Oh, I I guess, you know, the whole like, um, golden gold, golden gold. I wouldn't be caught dead. Like I thought they were gonna do that when they entered the Emerald City and they didn't. They just had, I mean like, don't get me wrong. Like they were in there voguing, living their lives. Like they were just getting it like, woo like shade like yes mama they were doing it and I was like 100% there for them but I wanted them to change colors so bad I wanted them to go from green to red to gold or whatever it is I wouldn't be caught dead like how fabulous would that have been but I guess that was from the movie version they chose not to bring it into this but I mean with the voguing it would have been so fabulous with the lighting if they had been wearing all white and then the lights hit them and changed colors and they had been like dropping you know doing the doing the drop and like coming down <laughs> Ooh, I mean I was there for it as it was but I would have been really there for it if they had changed colors and did all that okay so now let's go on to now that I've like hyped it up and told you what I loved now let's go on to what I didn't like besides common the grammar I didn't understand why they needed to make Dorothy speak improper grammar like all the double negatives were a little too much for me I know that people talk like that and that's just the way vernacular Maybe that's the, how they're talking in Kansas or Omaha or wherever it is She chose to found home, but like I was just a little bit like Okay, we have enough of that can like we have enough of that in the songs like we don't we we can, you can use the improper grammar at certain point to make a point or for emphasis But like it was just a little like overdone um Oh, and Eveline's death. That was a little weird. Like, it just happened so bloody quick. It was like, oh, blah, 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 Psh, dead. And I was just like, ah, she had such a great entrance. I would have loved for her to have like a really great exit. It was, it was everything I needed it to be. It was modern. Uh, people were like, you know, making their funny little snarky comments online, but that's fine. For those of us who like needed it for our souls, like it gave us what we needed. And I was really very satisfied and I've recorded it and I'm going to watch it again. And Shanice Williams is my new hero. And I hope if they revive it on Broadway that she is in it and I will have a legit excuse to fly to New York City to go see it because I want to see her. I want to see this magic 
I want to see it on stage because it, it affects me so much more when I can see things like this on stage. TV was great, but I want to see it on stage, you know? Okay, guys, let me know what you thought of The Wiz Live. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. You have a fantastic weekend. Bye.